servant heart, I thank you for the word that you've put on his heart today. I pray that you will speak to him and speak through him. And the words that are of him are easily forgotten. But the words that are of you stand in people's hearts and in people's minds. Bless him as he shares this word, Lord. May he speak with clarity and with truth. And I pray that it really ministers to people today. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Over to you, Alan. Thank you. Morning, Junction. Give everybody a wave. Okay, so the church is in transition. We haven't been this way before, have we? We've not actually experienced anything like this ever. Um, the last two weeks we've been uh, led by Gordon and Karen. Thank you to them. Two weeks in Exodus. The children of Israel came out of Egypt. They'd been in a different kind of lockdown. And they then went wandering and wandering, seeing if God was with them. And eventually they got to the River Jordan. They went over. Moses hands over to Joshua. And then we have leadership through the judges. And then we get to the time of the kings. And the next two weeks, uh, that's this week and next week, is on Ezra and Nehemiah. I wonder when you last read Ezra and Nehemiah. Most commentators think that Ezra and Nehemiah started off as one book. And now we've got the two of them. So after these two weeks in Ezra and Nehemiah, then there'll be two weeks looking at the early church. And then Phil's going to lead us in a summing up. I think I've got that right. Scott, you can put your thumbs up. Excellent. Right. So I was never interested in history at school, mainly because I couldn't remember the dates. But as I get older, I'm more interested in seeing how things fit together. So where does Ezra and Nehemiah fit? And how do the prophets fit in with Ezra and Nehemiah? Ezra and Nehemiah is one of the um, historical books. It follows Chronicles. And in the last chapter of the second book of Chronicles, we find this character called Jeremiah. And Jeremiah prophesied that the children of Israel were going to have problems. In fact, they've been so disobedient that they were going to go into exile. That's a different kind of lockdown. And that uh, was a 70 year lockdown. So our three months is peanuts compared to their 70 years. During the time of the exile, the children of Israel were deported from Judah several times by different people down into Babylon. Um, hands up if you've ever heard of Josiah, good King Josiah. Thumbs up for Josiah. Yeah, good man. This is in around about 640 before Jesus. He became King of Judah at the age of eight. Wow. And he started bringing in reforms in the 12th year of his reign when he was 20. So young people, thumbs up for you. You can do things, you can change the world when you're young. But don't forget, it, we can also change the world when we're old. One person at a time, we can change the world. So here are the children of Israel down in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar had something to do with that. There are lots of big names here. In 598, Jerusalem was besieged for the second time. Review your own history of the children of Israel. After Solomon, the kingdom was divided. There was the northern kingdom, ten tribes, and Judah, the southern kingdom. And they had different kings. And most of the kings got things wrong. Jerusalem was besieged for the third time, and you can read about that in 2 Kings. And then there was yet another fourth deportation. All kinds of problems, one after the other after the other. And then during the exile, we get the story of Daniel. Daniel was down there in Babylon. 
the Persian Empire was getting stronger. How does all this have to do with us today? Well, it gives us some kind of background as to how the, how the Jewish people, how the Israelites, not only coped with being away from Jerusalem, and I'm not suggesting for one minute that uh, the village hall in Bolton Mon Chelsea is anything like a temple for us. It's nothing like it. Um, but they were very focused on place very focused on place because that's where the temple was that's where they thought god's presence was and they were away so in the psalms as you'll find out in the break in the uh, breakout groups they sing a song lord how can we sing your song when we're down here in babylon so while we are away from being together it's very much for us individually and as family groups to keep in touch with the Lord. We can't do it together. And although that's a great encouragement to us to be together, even on this video, our responsibility is to be majoring on our personal relationship with the Lord. So there they were down in Babylon longing to be back where they were before. I wonder if that rings bells for you. I wish we could be back together like we used to be. But I was very thankful for Katie's prayer earlier because she'd mentioned green shoots. Thank you, Katie. Green shoots. Things can happen during the exile. The children of Israel were still having babies down in uh, Babylon. And when they started to go back to Jerusalem, there were 42,000 who went back first with a fellow called Zerubbabel, but more about him in a minute. So let's leave it there and go to our breakout groups. Thank you, Scott. Call me off guard then. <laughs> okay. So preparing for going back home. We're not talking about the, church, the uh, village hall. We're talking about getting back into community. So for the children of Israel down in Babylon, they had a surprise because it was King Cyrus of Persia who made the suggestion that they might want to go back. He actually found lots of the gold stuff that was being used in the temple and he asked this chap Zerubbabel how about that for a name <laughs> Zerubbabel which uh, some people think means made in Babylon so he was probably born during the exile and he led about 42,000 of the Israelites back to Jerusalem to lay the foundations of the temple which Sounds good, um, but what was in Zerubbabel's mind was probably to establish things back the way they were before. Let's rebuild the temple. Let's get the traditions back in place. Um, but experience suggested that the glory of God didn't actually get back into the temple. Hmm. So that was the first going back. And then this man, Ezra, Ezra went back with some more people to get the community straight. And when he got back to Jerusalem, he found that lots of the people who hadn't gone into captivity had intermarried with surrounding tribes, which is where the Samaritan problem came in. And Ezra, in wanting to purify the community, said that if, if chaps had married wives from other nations, that they had to divorce their wives. And strikes me that that's not a particularly good way to build community, because it was actually tearing families apart. 
because it said in the law that you shouldn't intermarry. So if you had intermarried, then you had to be get back to basics. So was that really that successful? Zerubbabel with the temple, Ezra with the community, and then we come to Nehemiah. He wasn't a very small man, as some people have suggested. He wasn't knee high. He was a big man in terms of the job that he had to do rebuilding the walls. But he faced problems in doing that, and the problems were coming from the people round about. People like Sanballat and Tobiah, who really thought it was rather silly what he was doing. He was looking to bring about the security of the nation. And there was a stage in the rebuilding of the walls when people were building with one hand and had a sword in the other. So questions with probably lots of different answers, but Phil's going to take us forward with Ezra and Nehemiah next week. But the question I want to leave you with was, were these attempts at rebuilding successful? Was it really a good thing for Zerubbabel to be rebuilding the temple? Was it really good that Ezra was trying to rebuild the community by tearing families apart? And was it really helpful that Nehemiah was building the walls? Because when you get to the end of Ezra and the end of Nehemiah, you don't find tremendous rejoicing at how wonderful things were. So I'll leave you with some questions and Phil can give us the answers next week. Was Zerubbabel responsible for a rebuilt temple but no presence of God? Was Ezra responsible for sticking to the rules but not having any compassion? And was Nehemiah really successful in building up the walls but not giving the people of God security? Our security needs to be in that passage from Colossians chapter 1, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when people say, where is your God when you can't worship at the village hall? He's in us as well as with us. We look forward to being together, don't we? Thumbs up. Yeah, we're looking forward to being together, but it's in order to rebuild community so that the green shoots that Katie mentioned in her prayer can develop and be fruitful. We can see the church greater than it was before because the kingdom can grow during lockdown. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Alan.